Joining me in the forum are my ESPN colleague, that is Tom Friend, and a columnist for Slam Magazine, Vincent Thomas is back. Good to see you both. Yes, All right, guys, starting with Team USA. Tom, did you see anything in the first round against China that you did not already know about Team USA? Well, I didn't think Dwayne Wade was going to be this good right now. I mean, coming off the injury, that's the one thing that's blown up at me, is that Miami Heat are going to be good next year with Beasley and Sean Marion. But they do this every year. When they start at the Olympics, they look like they're going to route everybody. And there's always that one game where they don't shoot the threes, and somebody on the team shoots 75% from three, and they get that little loss. But this team looks like a gel and gelling and, put, and was put together right. All right, I'm going to go back to that point in one moment. But first, are they who we thought they were? Uh, well, I think that they are who, who we thought. Well, depends on what you thought that they were. <laughs> I thought that they were going to be... So you're making this much tougher than it needs to be. <laughs> but the, the thing about it, though, Jim, is that what people thought they were is the redeemed team, a team that's going to win the gold, you know, for the first time since 2000. And I think that the reason why we can believe that that's going to happen is because we haven't seen a team play defense like this or who has a defensive potential that this squad has probably since 96. And when the three-point shot isn't dropping and the team, you know, puts the zone on you, the only way that you can really break that zone without, being, without shooting the three exceptionally well is to, you know, create havoc, get some turnovers, get some rebounds, get out on the break. This and is the, the most humble that. dream team, so to speak, that I've seen. I mean, th this team really has a chip on its shoulder. And I think the, the, the world thinks they can be beat, and that's half the battle. So these guys really, really have a chip on their shoulder, and that's why they're probably going to win it, because they really... Humble and go, all right, go back to that point about the three not dropping. It did not drop in the first game. Is that a red flag? Well, not right now. It's only one game. If it continues to happen through th um, the quarterfinals, then it will be a red flag. But for now, I'm telling you, the defense is what's going to win right. for, for this squad. they got to force the tempo. It's got to be up-tempo. And Michael Red changes things. I mean, if Michael Red can hit like he hit yesterday again, you know, that's the key if he shoots. But he's been streaky. The fact of the matter is, Allen Iverson and Stephon Marbury weren't guarding anybody in 2004. You saw that team of Chris Paul, Dwayne Wade, LeBron, and Kobe, how they got after it with the, with the full-court pressure. That's what's going to win the goal. And there's so much made about, do we have a perimeter player who can shoot the long ball or not? I mean, they're playing from 20 feet out. More than Michael Red should be able to shoot that ball consistently from that spot, right? Right, and, and I think that, you know, that was a pretty hyped game, you know, the, the mm -hmm. billion people watching, and, and they were nervous. I, you could tell the body language. Those guys were nervous. Maybe that affected the shot. I think that Kobe can shoot, and we all know Kobe can shoot it. We all know Wade can shoot it. He, was, he didn't even miss a shot that game, so they'll be fine. All right, so I was going to say, topic number two, NBA Europe, or NBA players allegedly going to Europe. Carlos Boozer is the latest guy to say, you know what, I might think about that. Are you buying any of this? Do you think a top-flight NBA star would ever leave in their prime to go play overseas? But he said he was going to think about it, though, Jim. Like, I mean, he would obviously give it consideration. LeBron James, if you're going to throw him $50 million, give it consideration. Kobe Bryant, give it consideration. But superstars are not going to leave, especially a superstar like LeBron or Kobe Bryant, because they're going to get their money. They're not Josh Childish or, or Ben Gordon who are sitting there without contracts, and then somebody's offering them money, and they go take it. These kind of players are thinking about legacies, specifically Kobe and LeBron, and legacies are built on MVPs, yeah. rings, all-star bursts. There's no way that LeBron's going to leave in 2010 without if, an MVP. Would you think less of any of those guys, and I mean the top flight guys, LeBron, Kobe, if any of them left in their prime to chase that money, or for 50 mil, would you not blame them? No. If LeBron leaves and never wins a title, what, was, what good was it? I mean, he's got to win a title to be where he wants to be. It's the biggest joke. None of these guys are leaving. It's all negotiation. I mean, look, LeBron, when he comes up as a free agent, maybe a couple teams can only a couple teams can pay him, and this is leverage. He's not going anywhere. How many commercials is he going to shoot for Nike and, and sports drinks over there? How much is he going to be on TV over there? It's a joke. No one's going to go over there. The only guys who are going to go over there are the guys like Josh Childress or Arroyo, who really are the fringe players who can't get paid here. Right. But those guys aren't going. I, I, I love it, though, Jim, for, for this reason, that there's finally somebody that can, the, the players finally have another option because professional leagues, the NCAA, they always hold these players hostage. Like, wh what are you going to do? This is where your opportunity is. Well, but, the opportunity but here you and go. the dollars but are... But here you go. David Stern wants to have a team in Europe. Now, that's this is going to speed him up because he's talking about having teams in Europe now. But it'll and still be under the salary cap. The, the, the thing about going overseas right now is there that... There's no salary if, cap there. Yeah. Right. They can pay you however much. If they really do come up, come up with $100 million okay, now what, what about we're, we're talking about what it's going to do to LeBron's legacy. Now, LeBron would turn that thing on its head and say, this is what it's about. It's about becoming a, a international brand, about globalization. Do no, you it's buy not. That? Take off number, wait, I mean, then, it's then take about off, the paycheck, right? Not, take off yeah. number 23. If you say you're Michael Jordan, you wear the number, then go win six titles. I don't want to hear this stuff until he starts winning. Talk about going over there. He's not going to win in Cleveland. He, you know he's got to get out of there. 
if if LeBron if LeBron goes and he gets that paper overseas, I'm not gonna fault him. Go get your money. He's got it, he's but it if, here. but in terms of his legacy, when LeBron was a little kid, it was all about his legacy as an NBA basketball player. If he goes overseas, he's putting that in great jeopardy. Okay, good job, guys. See you both again tomorrow. When we come back, you will get my final burn on Brett Myers going. Brett Myers once.